All right, this is going to be a big one. This is the last lesson of, <coughs> excuse me, unit two for geometry. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive right in. We've got some new postulates. We've got, we're going to do an example that's not a proof, and then we're going to do a proof to wrap things up. And so we've got, we've got a, a big chunk. So the first postulate we're going to talk about is the, oh, I, whoa, just kidding. Well, I'll add it as I go. Looks like I forgot to add in. There's a lot to add in on this on this particular lesson. D is in the interior of angle ABC. If and only if angle ABD plus, oop, that's really probably the measure oop, of angle ABD plus the measure of angle <coughs> DBC equals the measure of angle ABC. So we're talking about, I could have swore, I, oh, I did. Oh, but I didn't. What is happening? Oh, look, I did draw this. Look at that. I could have swore I drew it, and I did. So rewriting it, the measure of angle ABD. So it's it's basically like the um, segment addition postulate, except for angles. This makes sense. Segment addition and angle angle addition. So basically, in practice, it means that we can take and add up these two interior angle, these two angles that are inside, and get the bigger angle. That's that's basically what that postulate says. Pretty straightforward, right? So let's do an example using this postulate. I'm going to erase this nonsense. There we go. Let's do an example using that postulate. So we're going to find the measure of angle one. So the measure of that guy right there. <coughs> Excuse me. If the measure of angle two is 56 degrees and the measure of angle JKL is 145 degrees. So we know that this one right here is 56 degrees. We also know that this major angle right there is 145 degrees. And so we were asked to find the azure of angle up. Oh, I labeled that wrong. Sorry, y'all. Got, got myself a little, little flustered. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The math is still the same because we know the big one and one of the little ones. So to find the other one, we just simply subtract. So all we have to do to find this out is take 145 and subtract 56, which when we do that, of course, we get 89 degrees. Okay, so it's really common, common problem type. We've already seen several of them. We'll continue to see more and more. Let's let's talk about a couple of new theorems. So the difference between we've talked about undefined terms, we've talked about postulates slash axioms. The next level on top of that is theorems. Theorems are not quite as no duh. Theorems have to be proven. Now, in our case, we're going to be giving them a lot of times. Now, we might write some proofs for some theorems as, as practice because it makes pretty good practice, but that uh, we, won't, we, we won't always. So, the supplement theorem says that if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary angles. So, supplementary angles are angles that add up to 180 degrees. Whoop. Supplementary. See what I did there? S for supplementary. Make it an eight. Supplementary is 180 degrees. Hopefully, probably that's review. But basically what that means is that if we have a linear pair like this one right here, then if we add this angle, so the measure of angle one in this case, plus the measure of angle two, the measure of angle two, that would equal 180 degrees. Okay. Now, in addition to the supplement theorem, there's also the complement 
theorem. The complement theorem says if the non-common sides of two adjacent angles form a right angle. So let's that's a little bit confusing sounding. Let's draw that picture in there. So if we have a right angle, so something like this, right? Adjacent angles, right, are ones that are right next to each other. So like this one and that one. So if the non-common sides of two adjacent angles form a right angle, then the angles are complementary angles. So supplementary, starting with an S, gives us 180 degrees. Complementary, starting with a, a C, gives us 90 degrees, right? So complement two, two adjacent angles that uh, make up the large, their larger angle makes a 90 degree angle, then they are complementary. 90 degree angles, Complementary angles means they add up to 90, so this kind of makes sense, right? But it can be proven, right? And so it's a theorem instead of a postulate. Continuing on up. There's a couple more. We've got several different postulates and theorems happening. I'm kind of rushing through them on here because I know that you can hit pause on that video and get all this copied down and all of those things will slow down on the examples, especially the proof coming up at the end. I don't want this to be a 45 minute long video. So that's kind of the theory there. All right, so next we have three different properties of congruence. Now we've seen the reflexive property, the symmetric pro, oops, 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 oops. We've seen the reflexive property, the symmetric property and the transitive property before back in algebra. Right, we've looked at those with numbers. Now they apply to pictures as well. We use all of these three properties whenever we are do, doing different proofs. Uh, the reflexive property is the most kind of no duh statement of the three. And we would write this in example form as angle one is congruent to angle one. <gasps> No, duh, it's congruent to itself. And that's, we we actually, you'll find this later, when especially when we get to triangle, con, uh, proving triangles congruent and different things of that sort. You'll find that we actually use this property more than you might think, uh, but that is called the reflexive property. <coughs> Excuse me. The symmetric property, if things are sy uh, symmetric, then we can flip them over. Same thing applies here. The symmetric property in this using these figures as an example would say that angle one, if angle one is congruent to angle two, then we can also say, let's add that if in here. If angle one is congruent to angle two, then angle two is congruent to angle one. So we can flip that statement around, which is important. If we're given uh, if we're given a statement one way in a proof and what we really need it to be the other way, then we can turn it around using the symmetric property. Now, the transitive property is why we have three figures here. So we write this in this example form as if angle one, excuse me, is congruent to angle two and, oh, excuse me, angle two is congruent to angle three, then angle one is congruent to angle three. Same as the transitive property in algebra, okay? Making sense so far? I hope so. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask me down in the comments. Or if you're one of my students, you're welcome to put it in homework help on our Discord server. So, next theorem is the congruent supplements theorem. It says angles are supplementary. Angles supplementary <coughs> to, excuse me, to the same angle or to congruent angles are congruent. So we've got our picture out here that is an example. If the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two e equals 180, so they're supplementary, 
and the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180. So they're supplementary. So if these two are supplementary and those two are supplementary, then those angles are congruent. That's a congruent supplements theorem. Very, very useful. You're going to, you're, um, when you look at this, you might kind of see something that if we smooshed all this together, we might end up with some vertical angle nonsense happening and we can kind of prove stuff using some vertical angles and all these other awesome things. So we've got another theorem and then we're going to do a proof example. Our final theorem that we're going to talk about in this video is the congruent complements theorem. We've got a congruent supplements theorem. This is a congruent complements theorem. It's same sort of principle. Angles complementary to the same angle or congruent angles are congruent. So I didn't, didn't write this one out in words, but let's, let's write this one out in words on here together. So in this, in this example, we would have the, if the measure of angle four plus the measure of angle five equals 90 degrees and the measure of angle five plus the measure of angle six equals 90 degrees. Then angle four is congruent to angle six, right? So that's kind of the picture example that goes along with the text description of the theorem. All right, making sense so far? We are going to finish this out by doing a proof together. Okay, so for this proof, we want to prove that if ray DB bisects angle ADC, then angle two is congruent to angle three. So let's, so, if you'll remember back to our last lesson, kind of one of the, the first way we want to start with this is writing down our given and writing down what we're trying to prove. I'm going to write down what we're trying to prove down here in the bottom corner. I'm going to put it in green. I don't remember what color I used last time. We're going to try to prove. I did given green. That's what I did. I do remember that. Oh, well, that's okay. We're going to try to prove that angle two is congruent to angle three. So that's what we want our last statement at the bottom of this proof to be. So let's see if we can walk through this puzzle. Proofs are fun. Puzzles, puzzles, puzzles. How about pink for puzzles? We're going to have our statements on one side and then our justifications on the other side. If you're just joining us on YouTube, you may want to go back and look at the last video to kind of look at our introductory deduction to proofs there if you've not seen it yet. Okay, so let's let's walk through this. So what we're, what we're given is always going to be our first step in the proof. So we are given that ray db bisects angle A, D, C. That's given, right? All right. So what does the fact that it bisects that tell us? So let's, let's kind of figure out where these things are, first of all. So A, D, C is this one right here. So what that tells us, first of all, is that these two angles, so ray, ray DB would be this ray, right? So we're talking about this one and this angle there, right? That's what, that's what we're looking at. So what that tells us is that tells us that angle one and angle two are congruent, okay? So let's go ahead and put that down. Angle one is congruent <coughs> excuse me to angle 2 
And the justification for that is because that's what bisector means. Now, what that means is that it's the definition, right? So we do look at the def for our justification would be the definition of angle bisector. All right. So now we've got angle one is congruent to angle two. What else? What else can we look at there? So here we've got. Let's see. There's there's several different pieces that are happening on here. Oh, I labeled this wrong. Let me go back and this is not labeled correct. We're we're going to have a hard time doing what we're we're doing. Actually, we probably could have gotten there, but a different way. But this is not what we're wanting to look at. What we're wanting to look at is this being angle three. And we're supposed to, yeah, two is congruent to angle three. That makes that makes a lot more sense. Angle one and angle two. So we've got, you notice, we've got this line DB and line AD, right? So if those are lines, then that means angle one and angle three are congruent. Well, actually, it doesn't mean that yet because we need to say one more thing first, right? We can say that angle one and angle three, one and angle three are vertical angles. Oops. Vertical angles. Vertical angles. And why can we say that? Because that's what vertical angles are. So definition of vertical angles. Now, <coughs> excuse me. We had a postulate in the last lesson that said vertical angles are congruent. So now we can say angle one is congruent to angle three. So we can we can label that over here as well. Okay. So our step four is going to be angle one is congruent to angle three. Because vertical angles angles are congruent making sense so far right now we learned a property just a little while ago <coughs> that says that sorry had to have a brain freeze <laughs> that says that if we have this guy angle one is congruent to angle two, and angle one is congruent to angle three, then we can say that angle two is congruent to angle three. And how can we say that? That was the transitive property. So angle two is congruent to angle three by the transitive property of congruence. QED, and thus it is proved. Looky there. We done did it. See you in the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Adios. Bye, and see you later.